Welcome to Rad Quarters. Today we'll be talking about ultrasound of gallbladder adenomyomatosis. I'm Dr. Dan Koval, and this episode is sponsored by Samsung Ultrasound. The beautiful images you're about to see were obtained on a Samsung RS85 Prestige ultrasound unit. We're going to review some examples of adenomyomatosis, and I'll highlight key teaching points throughout. Let's start with a case. This was a female patient in her 70s presenting with a history of gallstones. Here we're looking at an ultrasound of the right upper quadrant. There's the liver. Here's the gallbladder. Patient is in the left lateral decubitus position. Notice that there's an echogenic shadowing gallstone here in the proximal gallbladder. Do you notice anything else? Well, there's this area of heterogeneous wall thickening at the mid portion of the gallbladder, causing annular narrowing and giving the gallbladder this figure eight configuration. Now, do you notice anything else as we look more closely at this area of wall thickening? Well, there are multiple foci of comet tail reverberation artifacts scattered throughout this area. And as we scan through, the more we scan, the more we see numerous foci of these comet tail artifacts. Now, as we evaluate this on real time imaging, we can even better appreciate those numerous foci of comet tail reverberation artifacts scattered throughout the area of that annular wall thickening at the mid portion of the gallbladder. Notice again, there's that echogenic gallstone with post acoustic shadowing. And as we move towards the gallbladder fundus, do you notice anything else? There's another area of thickening. This one looks almost more mass-like, but also does have these areas of comet tail reverberation artifact, perhaps even some tiny cystic spaces. Now, when we change the transducer position to really optimize evaluation of that fundus, we can better evaluate the morphology of that second area of thickening. And notice those numerous foci of comet tail artifact about that area of fundal thickening. And you notice any other feature here that helps us make the diagnosis? There's an anechoic cystic space right there. So this is a patient with adenomyomatosis. And this patient actually had both the fundal type and the segmental type. And I'll explain those types shortly. But first, adenomyomatosis is a common cause of benign gallbladder wall thickening. It's actually seen in up to 9% of patients. And the incidence increases with age. So we often see this in older patients. It's usually asymptomatic, but it can sometimes be associated with sporadic right upper quadrant pain. Pathologically, there are hyperplastic changes of the gallbladder wall with mucosal overgrowth. And that leads to these mucosal herniations into the muscular layer of the gallbladder wall, forming these tiny bile-filled cystic spaces known as rokitansky ashoff sinuses. Sometimes if these sinuses are large, we might actually see them as discrete cystic spaces in the gallbladder wall, as I just showed you in the area of the fundus in this case. But instead, what we often rely on are cholesterol crystals that deposit in the sinuses, and that's what causes that comet tail reverberation artifact. And that comet tail is the most common finding that we see on ultrasound with adenomyomatosis, and it's highly specific for this diagnosis. You can also exaggerate that comet tail artifact by adding color Doppler. So in this patient, if we add color Doppler, Notice that we see this exaggerated color comet tail artifact at the area of that fundal adenomyomatosis, and this was the edge of that segmental adenomyomatosis. So there are three types. There's the focal or fundal type, the segmental or annular type, and then there's a diffuse type where the entire wall will be involved. Regardless of the type, though, we're mainly looking for this comet tail artifact and or the cystic spaces, which are the key to diagnosis on ultrasound. Let me just show you another example of the focal fundal type. This is the most common type of adenomyomatosis. And you can see here there's a mass-like heterogeneously hypoechoic focus at the fundus, but we do see this area of color comet tail artifact, which is reassuring for the diagnosis of adenomyomatosis. Often this form of adenomyomatosis will have an ovary on the gallbladder configuration. The area of fundal wall thickening mimics an ovary that's been dropped onto the gallbladder fundus. It can almost appear extrinsic to the gallbladder with the rokitansky ashaw cystic spaces mimicking ovarian cysts. However, if this morphology is not recognized, it can be confused with a gallbladder mass, especially if there's not robust comatel artifact. In those cases, switching to a high-frequency linear transducer can sometimes be helpful. So here we're using a curved 7 MHz transducer, which is a common abdominal transducer. If we switch to a high-frequency 14 MHz linear transducer and evaluate the gallbladder fundus, here we can see that area of hypoechoic focal fundal adenomyomatosis. It does look somewhat like a mass, but you can see that there are some cystic spaces within that area, and that's reassuring for adenomyomatosis. Also, notice how it does kind of look like an ovary that's sitting on top of the gallbladder. 
And this appearance is often better visualized on real-time imaging as I'm scrolling back and forth through that area of fundal wall thickening. You can see it's very well circumscribed. We can see those cystic spaces within it. And do you notice anything else that really helps us make this diagnosis? Right, there are multiple punctate areas of comet tail reverberation artifact within it, which is again reassuring and highly specific for adenomyomatosis. One of the other types of adenomyomatosis is that segmental or annular type, as we saw earlier, and that will again narrow the waist of the gallbladder, yielding a figure eight or hourglass configuration. Something that's unique to this type of adenomyomatosis is that because we have this annular narrowing at the central lumen, we get stasis of bile in the proximal aspect of the gallbladder, and that will promote gallbladder sludge and stone formation. So this form of adenomyomatosis is more likely associated with stones, and this configuration can be somewhat confusing if the morphology is not recognized, because it may appear as though there are two separate cystic areas, a simple cystic area and then a gallstone-filled gallbladder. If necessary, MRI is extremely helpful for problem solving because it's not only specific for adenomyomatosis, but also sensitive. It does not require the presence of cholesterol crystals within the sinuses to make the diagnosis because MRI can directly identify the sinuses. And those will appear as T2 hyperintense cystic spaces giving a pearl necklace or a string of beads appearance. For the fundal type, here we're looking at an MRCP. This is the gallbladder, there's the cystic duct. And notice that there's this clustered area of cystic spaces, T2 hyperintense at the gallbladder fundus. Another example, here's the gallbladder, T2 bright, and then we see these little cystic spaces at the gallbladder fundus, giving that pearl necklace appearance. Segmental type, notice this is a different patient, but also showing that figure eight hourglass configuration with annular narrowing at the mid portion, the waist of the gallbladder. And notice again, we have these cystic spaces there, pearl necklace. Also similar to our case, notice that because of the increased stasis within this proximal aspect of the gallbladder, we have multiple gallstones, these T2 dark areas. Finally, the diffuse type of adenomyomatosis. Here we're looking at an axial T2 weighted image of the abdomen. There's the liver, here's the gallbladder lumen, and notice that there's diffuse gallbladder wall thickening with these T2 bright cystic spaces yielding that pearl necklace configuration of adenomyomatosis. Now, if on MRI there is still any question of malignancy, cholecystectomy is usually warranted. Also, patients that have symptomatic adenomyomatosis may also go on to cholecystectomy. All right, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you found this educational. Thank you to our sponsor, Samsung Ultrasound. If you like this lecture, a great way to support us is to subscribe to the video podcast on Apple or Spotify, or by clicking the YouTube subscribe button. Reviews are always greatly appreciated. To see bonus teaching material posted throughout the week, follow us on social media. Links are in the show notes or click the YouTube community tab. Until next time, radiology is life.